Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you for tuning in. I've just received a 25 key controller keyboard from Sunido, the Tempo Key K25. What a well thought out shot that was. If only brains were dynamite. Anyway, if any other company had messaged me and said, can we send you our 25 key controller keyboard for a demo slash review for YouTube? I would have said, yes, please do send it to me and I'll do you an honest review. But I wouldn't have been like massively excited about it because there's so many of these things on the market. There's so much choice, you know, and how much better can one really be than the many others on the market? The reason that I'm excited about this one is because several months ago, Sunido sent me their tempo pad and again they contacted me can we send you our tempo pad for a demo slash review for YouTube and I looked at it online and thought well you know 16 pads some assignable knobs some transport functions how much different can it be from all the others on the market but when I got it and I checked it out I found out that it's actually really really well designed it's very very good and really exceeded my expectations and if you're an iOS musician it's the very best one you can get check out my demo to find out why so with all that said I'm very excited about receiving this one I've not even opened the box yet so let's open it together see what's inside the k25 arrived very well packaged inside the box lid is a guide of how to attach the k25 to a PC hardware device or mobile device Inside the box, we see that the keyboard and all the accessories are packaged inside this very nice carry case, which is nicely padded and comes with a shoulder strap. Let's take out the controller and debug it. I love this purple colour, which is slightly see-through and the finish is glossy. Very cool looking. But if the purple is a little too uh, purple for you, it is also available in black. The keyboard, whilst not heavy, is made from a very dense plastic and feels a lot less pissy pants in construction than many other similar controllers in this price range. This bag really is absolutely smashing. There's loads of room in it, it offers a lot of padding and protection for the keyboard and the strap is detachable and adjustable. Just to give you an idea, in here I have an iPad that really needs a clean. I have an iRig audio interface and the keyboard itself, of course, and that left loads of room for any cables, adapters, earbuds, maybe even a small pack lunch. Anything that I wanna shove in there and take to the park with me while I look at ducks, make music, and have a pack lunch all at the same time. Also included with the keyboard is a microfiber cloth because this is a high gloss finish and you're gonna wanna keep it looking nice we have a usb a to usb c adapter which cable rather which if i just undo this little strap that comes with it i plug the usb c end into the back of the keyboard and the usb a end will go into my desktop or laptop which would allow data transfer and also power up the device if you prefer to go down the route of uh, an old-fashioned MIDI cable, stick the 3.5mm adapter into the back of the keyboard and stick your MIDI cable in there. While we're looking at the back of the keyboard, there is um, a connector here for a sustain pedal, but I don't have one, so I can't demo that. I just thought I'd tell you that it's there. Now, if you wanted to connect this to an iOS device, Sunido also include a little adapter that converts this USB-A into USB-C. So you could plug this directly into an iOS device that has the modern USB-C connection. And that would allow the data transfer. However, experienced iOS musicians know that asking uh, an iOS device to power up something like this is folly. So also included is this cable, which plugs in at this end. And all these connections, by the way, all feel very sturdy. There's no playing it. Nothing feels flimsy about this at all. And this end will go into, you know, one of those kind of adapters that you get with your iPhone. Stick that in a wall socket. So you've got power coming from there and just data transfer here. However, most iOS musicians use a powered hub before their iOS device and any controllers or interfaces or whatever that need to go into the iOS device or go into the hub 
then into the iOS device. And I have found that if you plug this into such a hub, that will provide sufficient power for the keyboard and also allow the data transfer. For me though, my powered hub is pants and there are already a lot of things plugged into it. So I'm simply gonna use this cable for data transfer through the hub and I'm gonna keep this, you know, just to keep this plugged into the wall just to lighten the load on my hub, which I really need to replace. If I tried to cover every feature and use case for this controller keyboard, this would be a very long video, but Sunido asked me to look at how the K25 performs as an iOS controller, specifically using Cubasis 3. So I'm going to open a new Cubasis 3 project here. I'll remove this audio track because I don't need it. This default MIDI track is armed and if I play the K25, you'll see that both the keys and the pads, which are backlit by the way, are working already. I haven't done anything to set that up other than plug the controller into my powered hub. Let's select a sound from Cubasis's free lo-fi piano. If we go to routing for this channel, you'll see that all MIDI ports is selected. This means that when the track is armed, indicated by this red circle, any controller connected to my hub would play this instrument. If I press here, I can select the tempo key from the drop down list. Now only this controller will play a lo-fi piano. So potentially I could add more instruments and set my project up so that each instrument could be played by a different controller. Let's look at some functions. I'll play a chord and then press the octave up button and play again. We can go four octaves up and four octaves down. As I do so, you'll notice in the display window here, it tells us what octave we're on. This display window shows relevant information as we access many of the controller's functions and is incredibly helpful. I've also got transpose up and down here. The keys, which make very little noise by the way, are slightly wider than those found on many MIDI keyboards. They're somewhere between typical mini key size and full size. I personally find it a very comfortable size to work with and they do feel very nice for a controller keyboard in this price bracket. The light years ahead of the MPK mini keys which feel rather like pushing biscuits through treacle. The keys and pads are touch sensitive, but if we need them to put out a constant volume over here, we have a fixed velocity button. There are three different algorithms we can apply to the touch sensitivity. The default, which best suits me, is linear mode. Let's change it to logarithmic by pressing and holding down the main knob. Then we press a key, and now we can turn the main knob to select log. A couple more clicks to save. Now I can play with a light touch, but more volume is produced. And in exponential mode, I can play really heavy handed, but the volume is generally lower, unless I really smack the keys or pads and the sensitivity on those pads, by the way, is amazing, even better than those on the tempo pad. These are more like the Akai pads, which is the only area those particular controllers excel. In this project, I have some drums made with Cubasis 3's Halion Sonic Selection in-app purchase. Let's map these transport buttons to the door so that we can start and stop them. I go up here to set up MIDI, MIDI Learn. Buttons in Cubasis highlighted in green are unmapped. I'll select the loop button and press the corresponding button on the K25. That's mapped. I'll do the rest now and as I don't need a stop button in Cubasis 3, I'll use the tempo key stop button to switch the metronome on and off. Exit MIDI Learn, 
and now I can operate the transport functions of my recording software from the keyboard. Cubasis 3 has a built-in synth called Microlog, which should not be underestimated. I've added it to this project here and armed the track. This great preset dark analog pad sounds great when you open it up with some modulation. Not everyone likes pitch and modulation strips over a joystick or wheels, but I don't really care as long as they work well. The ones on the K25 are very sensitive and responsive. I haven't played better ever. If I press keys up here and press here to switch from keys to pads, you'll see that Cubasis 3 provides us with a set of chord pads so that we can play a full chord with one finger. If you press edit here, you can choose what chord you want to be played by each pad. I've already selected my chords and I want to play them with the K25. So I'll go to setup, MIDI and learn. Then get the pads on screen, touch a chord pad, touch the pad on the keyboard and it's mapped. I'll just do the rest. But there are eight chord pads left to map. So I'll press the pad bank to move over to bank B. And now I have another eight pads available to me. So I'll map them to these chords. The same thing applies to this bank of eight assignable knobs. If I press knob bank, I can access another bank, meaning in total I have 16 assignable knobs and 16 assignable pads. The knobs, by the way, are normal knobs, not endless encoders, and I can never decide which I prefer anyway. I want to assign some of these knobs to synth parameters, and that can be done like this. Touch a knob, twist a knob, and it's mapped. So I can use the pads to play my chords and the keys to play a lead over the top, badly obviously because it's me, but what if I want to control two different sounds just from the tempo key? Here I have two tracks, two microlog sounds. Sound 1 is set up to receive MIDI input from the tempo key on MIDI channel 1. I'm going to change sound number 2 so that it will only listen to MIDI information being received on MIDI channel 2. Now by default, all MIDI data being sent from the K25 is on MIDI channel 1. If I press and hold the main button and then press pad 1, in the display menu you'll see that we can turn this main control and use a series of presses to change how the pad will function. All I want to do is to change it to send MIDI data on channel 2. Now all from this controller I can control the transport bar, play chords, lead and use the knobs to control synth parameters, volumes and effects sounds. A really nice feature of the tempo key is the arpeggiator. Notice the functions written over the top of every key on the keyboard. Press and hold the ARP button to choose a time division and swing setting and what direction we want the notes to play in.
Now let's select the latch setting and pissy pants about with the number of octaves our arpeggio covers. The arpeggiator does not operate the pads, instead we have this note repeat function. When we hit a note, that note will repeat based on the current arpeggiator settings and we can change the speed by tapping several times on the tap tempo. There was a point when I was getting to know the K25 and I got a little bit disappointed and that was when I realised that it doesn't have its own app available for download from the App Store. The background to this is, the thing that made the Sonido Tempo Pad so special for iOS musicians is because it has its own app for free download from the App Store and any changes you want to make to the way that the controller functions you can do on your iOS device. See, normally software like this for a controller is only available on desktop. So what you have to do is you unplug your controller from your hub, you plug it into your desktop or laptop, you open up the software, they make the changes that you want to make, you send to device, unplug, plug back into your hub, only to realise you wish you'd done something a bit different, unplug, plug back it. It's a pissy pants about and nobody wants that. And I'd presumed that Sonido would make such an app for the K25. And then I realised that actually it's completely unnecessary. Any change that you want to make for this controller you can do on the controller itself. All you do, you press and hold the main button, you press on the function that you want to change and then with a series of twists and presses on the main button you can change any controller function you might wish to. Save it and the device remembers it. So it is a non-issue, although it would still be nice to have the software because then you'll be able to save profiles for working on different projects. So, is the K25 the best controller of its kind for iOS musicians? Well, I've played an awful lot of them, not all of them, but uh, an awful lot of them, and this is the best one I've played in its price bracket. I highly recommend it. I mean, Sonido, you know, it's not an old name, is it? It's not a legacy name, but the quality of the product should speak for itself. Now tell me, what controllers are you using? Do you love them or do they suck? In the comments below this video, I want to hear from you. Let's talk about controllers. I hope that this video has been helpful. Until my next one, take care of yourselves, be kind and be good, look after yourselves, look after the planet, play lots of video games, make lots of music, and try not to piss pants about. I'll see you later.